In Mark chapter 16, it says that, right, this is the last verse in the book of Mark. It, let's read it together. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. What does that mean? That means they were walking with Jesus everywhere. And when you walk with Jesus, he works with you. See, see, we don't, we don't, we're not just out there. You see, you see another rap star this week, Christian rap star, theologian rap star. I don't believe in Christianity any morning, anymore. I just, I renounce my faith. A real popular quote unquote Christian rap star is my thing is you don't know Jesus. So you can say you're a Christian, you can go to Bible seminary, you can study all the Greek and the Hebrew and everything, but until you actually have a relationship with Jesus, you're just as lost as anybody. And so we're seeing this whole thing. You have this, this person's coming up. You know, I've, and this is what they say, I've deconstructed my faith. And I'm like, what are you talking about deconstructing your faith? Do you know Jesus or you do not know him? You know, I know Anthony pretty well. Anthony Wilson, I love Anthony Wilson, right? I'm not gonna sit here and go, you know what? I'm deconstructing my faith about Anthony. I know Anthony. I have a relationship with Anthony. I love him, right? And so you need to realize that in these last days as people are being shaken, we're finding out who the true believers are and those that just profess him in name only. And there's a, church, there's a whole church of people like this that are religious and they wear collars and they, they have funny language and they, and they say a certain thing. And they'll say things like, I love God and, and I believe in God. But there's a difference between believing in God and knowing Jesus. Just because you believe in God, I'm glad, I'm glad the Bible says even the devils believe and they tremble. So are you trembling? No. <laughs> so, so we have to understand that God wants us to walk with us. Now, to walk with Jesus means that there are gonna be special situations that I almost started saying interruptions, but see, there's really no such thing as an interruption if we're in the spirit. See, we say, well, I've got my, my plans, but we have to understand that, that God wants to present special situations that we just need to be ready for. Instant, in season, out of season. So, so we all know the story of the, pro, the prodigal son, he came home. We also know the story of the good Samaritan. And in Luke 10, it says that a, a certain lawyer stood up and tested Jesus and said, what do I do to inherit eternal life? And of course, Jesus said what's written in the law, and in verse 27, Jesus said, oh, the guy, the attorney says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, with all your mind, and, and then your neighbor as yourself. So in other words, part of us loving God means that we love people, amen? And so it's that second part that everyone gets tripped up on because everyone says, oh, I love God. Well, what about so-and-so? Oh, I'm working on it. But, but that's really where the rubber meets the road is in people that uh, are like that. And so Jesus, and then he wanted, verse 29, he says, and who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? And so Jesus tells, tells about the story. In verse 30, he said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves. The thieves stripped him, wounded him, and left, and left him half dead. And then verse 31, a priest came down and went on the other side. Verse 32, a Levite came, went on the other side. And verse 33, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And as he, when he saw him, what's it say? <laughs> now notice it doesn't say anything about the religious people having compassion. You got to be real careful when you see a homeless person. You better be sure you have compassion on them. In fact, that should be our first response when we see anyone. Because most people are bruised, beaten, broken, and left for half dead. And they don't have anybody. They don't have a church family that's shout, you know, shouting, you know, I ran out of that grave. You know, they've never been in an environment of love like this. They're hurting, they're broken. And so the first thing that as we walk with Jesus, realize that there's gonna be people that come into our life that are messed up and that our first response has to be compassion. And in verse 34, he went to him, he bandaged his wounds. Well, that, you know, we don't know what kind of wounds he had, but that means I mean, he didn't have anyone else do it. 
He, he banished this person's wound. He poured oil and wine to cleanse it. He set him on his own animal, and then he brought him to an inn and took care of him. Now, I never thought of this before. I just thought, okay, well, they just went to the inn. Do you realize what that meant? That meant that, that, meant that first of all, he was riding a donkey, and I think it was a Mercedes donkey, right? <laughs> he was riding a nice donkey when he encountered this person. And so, first of all, he had to have bandages. He had to have oil and wine. So the question is, where's your oil? Where's your wine? Where's your bandages? Like, like are you ready when you encounter someone? It's not up to anyone else. It's up to you. It's up to you to say, okay, here's some bandages. Here's some oil. Here's some wine. The oil of the Holy Spirit, the wine of the presence of God. And he had compassion on him. But then he, then he says, okay, now I'll tell you what. You sit on my donkey. What does that mean? That means that he put him in an elevated place, a, a place that was higher than him. And now they had to walk together to the inn. So, so that's, a, that's a huge different picture than just, hey, bud, here's, I mean, the thought that a Christian would sit there and come down on a homeless people and you won't even give them $20, or you see someone that's struggling on whatever, and, and, and our first thing is, well, not just homeless people, but people that are just broken. Well, they made their own bed, lie in it. Man, I sure hope God doesn't do that to us. I thank God that he doesn't deal with us according to our transgressions. And so he, so he put him on, and I just see this good, this Samaritan who was just walking now. So now they're walking to the end. He was on his donkey before, now they're just walking. And, and, uh, and then of course he took him to the, the hotel, and then he gave him money. He actually gave him two denarii, which was two days of wages. So if you make a hundred and if you make fifteen bucks an hour times that's a hundred and eighty dollars. So that means he gave the guy three hundred and fifty bucks, basically. So so he so he he let God stop what he was doing, bandage him up, which that cost money. The oil and wine cost money, time cost him money. Then he put him in the hotel, gave him three. That doesn't say that this Samaritan was rich. It wasn't like he had all this surplus, but he recognized that God put someone in front of him. And part of walking with Jesus means that we're going to walk with those and support those that God puts right in front of us. And your neighbor is that person who's been stripped or robbed or they've been wounded or damaged. And so ask yourself, what are your bandages? Do you have bandages? Do you have oil and wine? Do you have extra money in case God wants you to buy someone a car? In case God wants you to pay someone's mortgage payment? You see, you start thinking differently. You start thinking, oh, so... Wait a second, God's universe doesn't revolve around me? <laughs> Friends, once we've been saved and born again, it's God's uh, uh, anointing and his, his empowering, God's commission upon our life to begin to walk with these people, to walk with people. You know what that means? He had to slow down. We keep getting that wonderful word. <laughs> Slow down. How much time did you have this week where nothing else was going on? Where you just pushed aside everything and you just sat and you said, Lord, just speak to my heart. I just want to be with you. I just want to pray. I just want to seek you, God. And I'm just going to I'm just going to be quiet. I'm just going to be still. And as we, as we begin to realize that God's ways are different, and uh, it seems like God will, will always present the situation right at a time. So, so don't see it as an interruption to your schedule. Well, I'm busy. Thank God the Samaritan didn't say that. 
In fact, he, I, his whole motive, what was his whole motive? Compassion. How many of you know we need to be people of compassion? And that means, man, we're free of judgment towards people when they're hurting, when they're beaten down, when they're broken. And we, we begin to identify with that. And we begin to say, okay, well, we need to walk with the broken and walk with the lost. I think it's kind of funny when people talk about uh, we don't have time to get into this, but when Jesus talked about going the second mile, he was actually talking about people that were forcing you to do something that you didn't want to do and still going a second mile anyway. If you look it up in the NIV or NLT, other things like that, they're basically saying, if someone's making you walk a mile, go ahead and do two. And that whole context of going the extra mile is loving your enemies. See, this whole, this whole concept of walking with Jesus means to walk where he walked and walking with broken and lost people, walking at times with your enemy. Walking with Jesus is walking with those who are, uh, well, actually, go ahead and turn to Philippians right now, Philippians. Look at this, this is so good. Philippians, it says this, dear brothers and sisters, what does it say? Pattern your lives after mine. How many of you know that's a pretty bold statement? Pat pattern your lives after mine and learn from those who follow our example. For I've told you often before, and I say it again, with tears in my eyes, what's that, what's tears in your eyes? compassion, right? That there are many whose conduct shows that they're really enemies of the cross of Christ. What are you saying? I'm saying there's plenty of people that say they love God that are actually enemies of the cross. Wow. So, so we just be like, ah. no man, he had tears in his eyes. How many of you know that's a completely different take? When we see people that are living a certain way, we need to have that kind of compassion in our lives. They're really enemies of the cross. They're headed for destruction. Their God is their appetite or their belly. They brag about shameful things and watch this. What's it say? They think only about this life here on earth. That's the trap the enemy sets up. That's the trap. I don't have time for church. I, I don't have time to do anything for the Lord. I, I'm busy. I, I've got things to do. You're just thinking about your life here on the earth. Look at this, verse 20. But we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we're eagerly waiting for him to return as our Savior. Is there anyone here that's waiting for Jesus to come back? He... He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. See, when we walk with Jesus, it means we're not worried about this life. You're not worried about bills. The last thing you should worry about is bills. Well, what do I do? Give them to God. Give them to God. We have to be focused on eternity. Ephesians 5 says it this way, imitate God in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love. Follow the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice, as a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity or greed. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, or, uh, uh, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Watch this, verse six, guys. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. For the anger, King James says, wrath of God will fall on all who disobey him. Now, how many of you know if the churches of America would just 
post this scripture every week, things might be a little different. God, God wants you out of sin so he can move you forward in your calling in life. Amen? We're not supposed to live our whole life and then we're 85, 90 years old. Whew, I'm glad I don't have to sin anymore. And God's like, man, you were supposed to deal with that the second you came into the kingdom. The moment you came into the kingdom. So now God can use you for his glory. Don't wrestle with sin. Get the victory that God has ordained over it. And walk in the victory God has. Okay? You need to wrestle with the powers and principalities and tell them that you have authority in Christ. Amen? That's, that's a big difference between wrestling with sin and wrestling with a principality. Amen? See, so many people wrestling with their sin. You don't need to wrestle with your sin. You need to tell the enemy that you've been given authority in Christ. Amen. So, so look at this. Verse 7. Don't participate in things that these people do. Verse 8. You once were in darkness, but now you're in light. Live like it. Verse 9. This light within you produces only what's good, right, and true. Verse 10. Carefully find out what pleases the Lord. Don't take part in any worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It's shameful even to talk about these ungodly, what these ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. That's why I said, arise, o, awake, O sleep, arise from the dead. Christ will give you light. It's very simple. Christians have no business inviting magic and witchcraft and sorcery in their home. It's simple. What's Disney based on? Witchcraft, sorcery, and magic. What's Netflix pushing, you know, commodity is the supernatural, the demonic, you know, everything. How many of you know, how many, how, how much profanity should we be listening to every week? We shouldn't be listening to it. We already have to deal with it from the world just by going places, right? We don't need to just open the door and walk into our house. Some of you, you ever done this? Of course, Sonia and I, we have a completely different standard uh, that we've had for the last 20 years, but... You ever been inside a movie, you went to the movie and you go, this is gonna be a great movie, right? And you're about 20 minutes movie, movie in, into the movie. And all of a sudden there's some weird stuff starts happening. And there's some bad language. And there's something happens, you go, well, maybe it'll get better. And the Holy Spirit says, get out of there right now. And you go, you go well, mm, I already paid my money. My popcorn was 12 bucks, so you know, I'll just eat a little bit more. You go about 20 more minutes, there's some more vile stuff in there, and you're like, ugh, maybe it'll get better. You get out of the movie theater, and you're so convicted, and you feel like you need to take three baths. Because you're like, oh, God, what did I just watch? I'm going to save you a lot, of, a lot of trouble. The next time you want to see a movie, go to PluggedIn.com. PluggedIn.com. And, and that's James Dobson's website. And he will tell you all the sexual situations that are in the movie, all the language that's in the movie, and any spiritual implications in the movie. So then you just have to ask, how much nudity do you want to see? How much profanity do you want to watch? And how much magic do you want to see? And I'll just tell you, I'm going to do you a favor. You'll find out that there aren't any good movies being produced. Now, if it's a Christian company that comes out, you know, great. They, they hit the theaters once or twice a year, great. But Hollywood isn't producing anything that you can bring anybody to. It's just filthy because that's the way of the world. So, so the Bible, Bible says to walk with Jesus, we begin to understand, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to live? So as we walk with Jesus, there may be times that we also walk, we're gonna, we're gonna find the, the person that's been beaten but how many of you know, anyone to ever taken a, we're going to take a walk in the wilderness, wilderness, wilderness walking, right? Anyone ever walked into a wilderness before in your life? Two hands, right? How many of you know the wilderness is a beautiful place? God, what is going on? But the Lord will, see, walking with Jesus means there's times that you will go in the wilderness. But did you know that there's never a time for you to be in the wilderness that you're not to have the fullness of the Holy Spirit? And that's the difference. If you're in a wilderness experience, but you don't have the Holy Spirit filling you up, you are gonna be bewildered in the wilderness. But when you have the Holy Spirit moving, so Jesus is the pattern, right? Right? 
He's the pattern. He's the example. Well, watch what happened here with Jesus. Let's see how Jesus handled his wilderness. Luke 4, verse 1 says, Then Jesus, being what? Filled with the Holy Spirit. He returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. See, the key is before you go into your wilderness, you get full of the Holy Spirit. Amen? You get full of the Holy Spirit. And so... I just love this because Jesus, you know, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was born. He was touched with the Holy Spirit when he was baptized. But here, before he went into the wilderness, the Bible says he was filled again. Anyone here have a car? How many of you, your car has to get filled over and over and over again? We have to get filled, amen? We have to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you would baptize us afresh today with the Holy Spirit. We pray that you would fill us, Lord, with the Holy Spirit and fire. And it says that Jesus went into the wilderness and then he was tempted, verse 2, for 40 days by the devil. He didn't eat anything and afterwards when he had ended, he was hungry. And, and how many of you know that when Jesus was in the middle, when he was in the thick of it, he didn't go on Facebook and complain. He, 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 you know what he did? He quoted the word. Walking with Jesus means that you're full of the Holy Spirit, and when you're in a wilderness, you don't go around everyone going, I'm in the wilderness. <laughs> you just begin quoting the word of God. My God is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. And that's what Jesus started doing. The, and how many of you know the enemy is no match for the God that is in you? The enemy is no match for Jesus that's on the inside of you. And of course, the devil tempted and he lost and in verse 15, 13, it says, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. And then Jesus returned to Galilee. Look at this. And what happened? There he is again. So what is God saying? He's saying, when you go in the wilderness, before you go in the wilderness, get filled with the Holy Spirit. And then when you're in the wilderness, quote the word. Quote the word. And then when you get out of the wilderness, get filled with the Holy Spirit again. Just stay full of the Holy Spirit. And then everything started opening up. See, we, as we walk out of the wilderness, we have to be filled with the Holy Spirit's power. It's just a walk. Can you say walk? Well, God is leading us. In, in Psalm 23, it says, Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. We have to understand that many churches and pastors and believers are afraid. We don't need to be afraid. And some people say, Well, I'm not afraid. Well, you are acting like you are afraid. And we need to be people that are focused on the harvest. In Psalm 116, it says, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. In Proverbs 13, 20, it says, He who walks with wise men, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. You show me a man that's surrounding himself with godly man. Men, and I'll show you a man that's going to do great things for God. So, so that's, that's what we're, we're seeing here. Now, what, what we need to understand is that uh, we need help in understanding what to do. Walking with Jesus means we say, God, help us. Sometimes we just sit around and I don't know, we just kind of twirl ourselves in a corner like a dog chasing his tail. What am I going to do? 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 How many of you know it's okay for you to go and say, God, help! Show me, Lord. Teach me. Lead me. But enjoy Jesus in the process. The Lord gave this to me. The beauty is not in the receiving, but in the asking. Sonia calls me up yesterday. I'm in the middle of doing a a lot of things and she's like I mean I'm 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 busy right and I really am busy and she's like hey you want to go on a quick uh, getaway with me for 15 minutes and I'm thinking I've got all this stuff to do she says I've got to go to the car wash I'm like you don't want to go through the car wash by yourself do you no I don't I just want some company. I just want to talk. So 
I'm like, give me $20. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just said, okay, let's go. So we went, we went to the car wash and, and we had a quick date, right? <laughs> but, but what was funny is just that it was just in the conversation that we had that is the precious times of life. And God is not, God is so much more interested in the conversation that you have about things than even just the result of it all. It's, it's about this, this dialogue, right? The dialogue, the dialogue, right? <laughs> the dialogue that we have. We were joking with them because the other day, how many couples, you know, we, we had a couples meeting the other day and we were talking about this. Some couples have dialogues, right? And some couples, some couples have dialogues. Just thought I'd throw that in there. Thought it was funny. But walking with Jesus means that you begin a journey where Jesus is speaking directly to you through the Word of God. How many of you know that God literally, well, let me just ask this way Is there anyone here, you're reading your Bible, and God literally speaks to you through you reading the Bible? Anyone? Look at this, okay? Now, some of you may not have experienced that before. Okay, but let me tell you, one of the greatest things, one of the greatest things that you can experience is say, God, speak to me, speak to me. And you know, start in the book of Psalms, right? Start in the book of Psalms and just say, God, speak to me, Lord, what do you say? You know, and and you read and then you get in the gospels and then all of a sudden, the words will leap off the page and God will speak something to your heart. That, that is also part of walking with Jesus. Walking with Jesus means you, you begin this journey and it becomes a joy, not a chore. Bible reading is not, oh, I need to do my devotions. No, man, I need God to speak to me today, right? Psalm 119, David said, blessed are you, O Lord, Teach me your statutes. In Psalm 86, he said, Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. In Psalm 119, Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I'll keep it to the end. Psalm 119, 66, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Psalm 143, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Psalm 27, Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Psalm 25, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you I wait all the day. So we realize that we call upon the name of the Lord to lead us. How many of you know, instead of just asking God for just the specific thing, just say, God, lead me. God, lead me, show me, teach me, teach me your ways. I want to understand your ways and realize that at any time, God will lead you to walk with him. And there's, there's uh, times that we walk with, with the Lord, and there's times that we also walk with other believers. Are you thankful for the body of Christ? Are you thankful that we can walk with other people? God has ordained for you to find those people that you're supposed to walk with, Okay? It starts here in the house of God, but it's finished throughout the week. There's people that God has called you to walk with. In Acts chapter 3, it talks about Peter and John. They went to the temple one afternoon to pray. How many of you know that they were, they were prayer buddies, right? Peter and John. It just doesn't say Peter went. It doesn't just say John went, but they went together and they prayed and there was a man there. Verse 2, as they approached the temple, there was a man that was lame. And he'd been there for years and years and years. In verse three, he saw Peter and John. He asked for some money. And Peter in verse four said, look at us. The lame man looked at him, expecting money. But Peter says, I don't have any silver or gold. But what I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and what? Walk. See now, when, when Peter said this, Peter was walking with with. Uh, uh, John, but he was also walking with Jesus. See, this week, God is going to call you to walk with other people 
But then he also wants you to walk with him because he wants to release a miracle in this situation. But you have to be willing to recognize that situation. Are you, is anyone, anyone what I'm saying? I mean, this is about, this is about walking with Jesus means there's gonna be some miracles that are already lined up for Russ. They're already lined up for Harold. They're already lined up for Stan. They're already lined up for George. They're, all, they're already lined up. And Peter, of course, took the lame man by the, by the hand, helped him up. His feet and ankle bones received. They were healed. He jumped up, stood on his feet, began to walk. Okay? The power of Jesus shows up when we walk with him and with those he's called us to walk with. He's there all the time. But as we walk in Jesus, that's when his power shows up. Think about it this way. The miracle happened because John and Peter were walking together. And they had a kingdom purpose. And then as they had the kingdom purpose, guess what? There was a need that happened, but it doesn't stop there. That's what's so beautiful when you realize about, about walking with Jesus. A lot of people go, well, look at that, cool. He was, he was healed. He was, he was uh, you know, no longer lame. But how many of you know that when God does a miracle, it's, not, it's never just about that person? The people that are in your life right now that need a miracle from God, when they get healed, it's not just about them giving glory to God. It's about all the people whose life they are going to impact that's going to give glory to God. That's what you understand. The, the battle that you're in is not just about you and your testimony, but it's about the hundreds and thousands of people that you and your family touch. And that's why the enemy's been fighting you so hard, because he's after your testimony. He's after the fact that God wants to do miracles in your life, and he's trying to stop them. But as you walk with Jesus, the miracles will come. Right. As you walk with Jesus, the miracles will come. And uh, I mean, Peter just was walking at the right moment. And then in verse 9, it says, All the people saw the guy walking around and praising God, and they realized he was the same guy. They were astounded. Verse 11, they all rushed out to amazement to Solomon's colonnade, and then when the, where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Well, I guess so. <laughs> Walking with Jesus means you walking with the right people. Ask yourself this, who are you walking with? Who are you walking with? Who are you walking with? You walking with people down at the bar, down at the casino? People just go to church, but they're not fulfilling what God has called them to do. Who are you walking with? And, and then Peter, verse 12, look at this. This is a different translation. Peter saw his opportunity and address the crowd. <laughs> and then he starts preaching the gospel. See, walking with Jesus, friends, not only means that you're walking with the Samaritan, not only means you're walking with Jesus in the wilderness, but it also means that you're walking in the middle of a miracle, and when that miracle happens, guess whose job it is to begin preaching? Yours. It's your miracle. <laughs> It's your message. And Peter just begins to say, hey, this did not happen because of my godliness or my own power. And he begins to lay out the gospel of Jesus. He began to preach. See, if you're taking notes, write this down and I'm closing. When we walk with Jesus, it will create opportunities for the gospel to go forth. When we walk with Jesus, it will give opportunities for the gospel to go forth. And that's, that's, what we're, that's what we're excited about. We're gonna see it. We're gonna see it. How many of you know that we're in the last days? We're in the last days, and it's time for the church to be the church. The, the, the people of the world are saying, man, will the real Christians please, please stand up? Stand up. I mean, they're, they're watching Christians devour one another, freaking out about all this stuff. And we should just be the most happy people on the planet. We need to be declaring the word of truth and the word of God and not caught up in all this other stuff, the fray. Amen. How many of you know when, they, when, they, when the, the apostles were around, Rome was not the friendliest government in the world. I mean, they were terrible. 
They were oppressing people like you've never seen. Yet the apostles and the people of God were still doing it. Now, in closing, I just want to share this with you. Walking with Jesus means to walk in the nature of who he is. How many of you know that Jesus is powerful? He's amazing. But did you know that God not only wants you to walk with Jesus, he wants you to walk in Jesus. Walk in Jesus. How about that? Walk in him. And of course, when, when you're walking with the right people, the Holy Spirit power starts coming into your life. And this is what I wanted to say. Go to Colossians chapter two. Back in the day, so you don't hear, I don't, hear that? You know what you used to hear? You used to hear this. Remember that? You used to hear this. How many of you remember that? Go to Colossians chapter something and you'd hear all the pages turning. Maybe we should get back to that. Maybe we should have a sword drill here next week. How many of you remember what a sword drill was, huh? You say, Psalms 42, right? And so everyone, whoever got the verse the first, you know, would get some kind of bubblegum prize or something. <laughs> Colossians 2, verse 6. Let's read this together. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord. How many of you have received Christ Jesus? Okay, so you've received him. What does the Bible say? Walk in him. Walk in him. Not walk around him, but walk in him. And then it says this, walk in him, rooted and built up and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Look at this. Beware. How many of you know when the Bible says beware, there's a reason for that? Just like we shared earlier about Christians that say, oh, it's okay, God understands. You're sleeping with someone, it's no big deal. You get drunk once in a while, it's no big deal. God understands. A little this, that, and the other. No. Beware, watch this, lest anyone cheat you through what? Well, you know, I, God is, God is everywhere. He's He's in the trees. He's in the dogs. You know, and maybe when I, you know, maybe he's into reincarnation. You know, philosophy and empty deceit according to the what? Well, you know, brother, this is the way we've done church. You know, you come in, you do three fast songs, you do two slow songs, you take up an offering, and then the preacher preaches. And then you have an altar call, and that is church. Well, what if we didn't want to do it that way next week? What if we didn't want to have any music or preaching, and we just hit our knees at the beginning of the service, and we just prayed the whole time? Are we caught up more in our tradition and our philosophy? See, the Bible says that we can't be caught up in the tradition of men, and then according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to what? Christ. You see, there's a big difference, friends, with us just ha having a Christian faith and us actually walking in the person of Jesus Christ. See, see, the difference in this last days is there's people that are just hoping and praying and they're, they're just grasping at straws. And then there's actually people who hear the voice of Jesus in their life. And not only do they hear the voice of Jesus, but Jesus shows up in their heart and they literally start following him and walking with him. Now, let me just say this. When people get born again, they get introduced to Jesus. There's no doubt. But what happens is, over time, we'll put that scripture back up there. Over time, the enemy starts messing with your mind. Well, maybe, maybe if I could just read another book. I, you know what I need? I need another Bible. This is a weapon right here. You know what? I just need a different Bible translation. 
You know, I just, I just need to pray more. I, 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 I just need to, to, to do this or do that. My friends, what you need to do is hit your knees as fast as you can and say, God, okay, is there something in my life that's not right? Yeah, you haven't forgiven this person, this person, this person, and this person. Okay, I'll forgive them. Anything else? Yep, you've opened this door, this door, this door, this door to the enemy. You gotta shut the door. Well, I want the pastor to pray for me. Look, there are times in life where you have got to deal with you and God. And people can pray over you and get rid of demons that are in your life. But if you don't shut those doors, they will come right back. And this is where the church is at. So the church is, is you, got, you got millions of Christians coming to churches who aren't walking with Jesus. Right? And so, so th- th- that's why it says... You, you got to be aware. You got to be aware of people that just think, "Well, maybe if I just get this Greek lexicon, or, or but Pastor, what, what what version do you study? Well, what do, what version did the apostles have? They didn't have a New Testament. They had an Old Testament. That doesn't. I'm not diminishing the Word of God. What I'm saying is, at some point, you've got to realize that God is speaking to your heart. Well, I just have got to find out where Cain got his wife from. (laughs) Maybe if I just memorize more scripture. My friends, all of that is part of you walking with Jesus. But the first thing Jesus is going to do is he's going to say, come to me. I will give you rest. And I'm going to deliver you from everything that you need deliverance from. Every single thing. He will deliver you from all of it. And so many people, they don't even know how to get that freedom because they're afraid. They, maybe they didn't have a mom or a dad that was there for them. So they think, well, if I truly entrust my heart to God, then I won't have anyone. No, you will have everything when you give your heart to the Lord. And so, again, I want you to leave here. The Lord wants you to leave here today with this new assurance that you can literally walk in and with Jesus. And once once that changes, the Holy Spirit will convict you and you'll start doing things like cutting your cable. You'll start doing things like changing the people that you hang around with. You, you're not going to have someone have to preach a message of why your grandchildren don't need to watch Disney. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will have already spoken it to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't get mad at a preacher for saying something the Holy Spirit has been telling you for years. It's amazing people that get offended when you tell Christians they shouldn't fornicate. How dare they? The Holy Spirit's been telling you that before you were with that person. They warned you. They said, don't do it. And so now we have people that are trying to deal. Wow, this is a heavy message. They're trying to deal with a week long of conviction because the Holy Spirit's been speaking to them all week long. And, and so they'll come to church to try to deal with all this and maybe get a, a something good. But, but how many of you know that, that at the end of the day, it's just you and Jesus. And everything that's being preached should already be confirming what God has been speaking to you. And then you come to that place of saying, yes, Lord, I will surrender. I will do everything you've called me to do. And look at this. The person of Christ and not, people are walking according to the tradition of this world and not according to Christ. The person of Christ, not the imagination of who they think he is, but the reality of the person of Jesus Christ. How many of you know that there's, there's two Jesuses? 
There's one Jesus that people have made up in their minds. And then there's the real Jesus. And that's why you have people that, that have these ideas and things. Well, I can do this. Why? Because they have built up an image in their mind of who they think Jesus is and not who he actually is. And that's why when you start going, okay, God, I'm ready to push aside everything, all of my tradition, all of my things that I have in my mind, and I want you to reveal yourself to me for who you are. Get ready for a life change. Get ready for your world to completely change. And then God will start, yeah. <laughs> then you will start reading the Bible. And you know what? Then the word of God is actually going to do what it was created to do. It will transform you. Yeah. He'll be like, whoa. Whoa, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was God, he humbled himself and he took on the form of a servant. The Bible says, whatever is not of faith is sin. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Man, I can never complain again. God destroyed all the Israelites in the wilderness because of grumbling and complaining. Pray without ceasing. This is the will of God. And everything give thanks. And so... That, that's when you know, you say, how do you know you start walking with Jesus? Your whole world changes. We're seeing it happen in some people in the church. It's crazy. It's a good crazy. But we're seeing people that their wives, husbands, children, young, they're just like, they're just getting a hold of God. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? You, you, you're just getting a hold of God. And the message is being preached or confirming that. Watch this, verse nine. For in Jesus, let's read it, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And here's your scripture for the week here, next here. Let's read it. And you are complete in him who's the head of all principality and power. You do not need another person to make you whole. You are complete in Jesus Christ alone. And once you start realizing this, I am complete in Christ. That doesn't mean I don't need people to walk with, but it means that my completeness is not based on anyone else but Jesus Christ. I am complete in him, and he has forever provided everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. Through Jesus who loved us and gave himself for us, we are absolutely complete in him. That means I don't need Facebook, I don't need drugs, I don't need alcohol, I don't need laziness, I need Christ and I'm absolutely complete in him and some of you, you you're not feeling this whole you say I just don't feel whole. I feel I need someone I need someone many men they go I've got to have this no you are complete in Christ and once you get to that point, then God will bring. If he, if he, if he, if he knows that you need a spouse or a girl uh, uh, or a, 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 a child or whatever in your life, God will put that in you. But you have to understand, our completion is found in Christ alone. Our completion is found in Christ alone. You don't need systems or patterns of this world or of this age to complete you. You don't need coffee to complete you. <laughs> People go, wait a second. <laughs> Trust me. You're complete in Jesus. In all, in all honesty, in, in all sincerity, friends, we need but one thing, and that is the person of Jesus Christ in our lives. We need the power of his Holy Spirit and God the Father of all who works all things together for our good. And I want us to just understand this right now, friends. The grace and the glory of God is upon you. How many of you believe that? It's upon you. His church, his bride, in this awesome and holy time that we are witnessing. 
We need to understand that we need to begin to hear because God is saying these words. The king is coming and the saints are arising. The heavenly host is gathering to bring forth the greatest harvest this world has ever known. So be sober, be vigilant, be ready for the coming of the Lord. Walk worthy of his calling. Walk worthy of his name. Walk worthy of the grace that has been so freely given to you. For you bear the name of Jesus Christ and his eternal kingdom. Bring forth the fruits of repentance in your life. Bring forth the fruits of his Holy Spirit. Walk in the joy of the Lord. Walk in the peace of God, the peace of his name, and the strength of his glorious power. Has he not commanded us? Be strong and be of good courage, for he is surely with us every step of the way. Enjoy his presence. Enjoy his house. Enjoy his people. Shine with his name and with his grace and his glory. You have been chosen and anointed and appointed for such a time as this. Walk Walk in him, walk in Jesus, walk in the Lord Jesus Christ and declare forever that he is King of kings and Lord of lords. On this day, we lift up the name of Jesus. We lift up the name of the Lord. We proclaim the kingdom of God and we say that forever we will praise the holy, mighty, majestic name of Jesus. Can we give Jesus a shout of praise this morning? Can we just bow our heads really quickly? Father, we just thank you right now. Lord, that you see everything that's going on in our hearts. You see everything that's going on in our homes and our lives. And we say in Jesus' name, Father God, that you will be glorified. We pray for people that are here right now. There's things that they're facing, things that they're going through right now. And Father, I just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for those that are struggling, those who feel like They've had these issues in their heart 